I'm Thomas, and I'm a sex researcher. Last week, Bill Gates, the billionaire founder of Microsoft, said that on two separate occasions, President Donald J. Trump asked him the difference between HPV and HIV. If this isn't a glowing representation of how our health education programs are failing, I don't know what is. But just because the President of the United States doesn't know the difference, doesn't mean you shouldn't. HPV, or human papillomavirus, is very different from HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. However, they both have an H and a V in the acronym, so it could be understandable that maybe someone might not always know the difference, even if you happen to be a very stable genius. So first I'm going to tell you about HPV, and then HIV. According to the CDC, HPV is the most common sexually transmitted infection in the entire world. They estimate that about 79 million individuals in the United States are currently infected, and the rate of new infections is around 14 million per year. They go as far as to say that every single sexually active individual will get HPV in their lifetime if they're not vaccinated. HPV is associated with genital warts. However, you don't have to have genital warts to have HPV. There are more than 100 different strains, and about 40 of them are transmitted via sexual contact. You can acquire HPV in the mouth, anus, or vagina. HPV strains are separated into what's considered low risk and high risk. Low risk strains can cause genital warts, which rarely develop into cancers, whereas high risk strains are responsible for up to 70% of cervical cancers. Many people don't know they have HPV until they have an outbreak, but a lot of people never have an outbreak. Basically, genital warts looks like bumps, and in severe cases, they're even described as being shaped like cauliflower. The time between infection and outbreak varies wildly. You could literally never have an outbreak or it could be years. In terms of treatment, there are a few different options, most of which are entirely painless. Remember, the prevalence of HPV is so high that literally anyone could have it, and it's not something you need to be embarrassed about. HPV affects your skin and moist membranes, which can sometimes cause vaginal, rectal, or penile cancers, whereas HIV attacks your immune system, which can make you more susceptible to infection. The World Health Organization Organization estimates there are nearly 37 million people living with HIV, and over 1 million in the US alone. Globally, as many as 88 million people have been infected since the beginning of the epidemic, and about 35 million have died of an AIDS-related illness. Young people are least likely to know their HIV status, and the CDC estimates that about 44% of people between 13 to 24 who are HIV positive don't know it. The way HIV works is that it attacks CD4 cells, which are white blood cells that fight infection in the body. The virus enters the CD4 cells and begins to make copies of itself, which are then sent throughout the body to other CD4 cells, which become infected and continue to spread the virus throughout the body. The average HIV uninfected person has about 500 to 1500 CD4 cells per microliter of blood. HIV enters the body and quickly that number drops, which is how the stages of HIV are defined and may eventually lead to a diagnosis diagnosis of AIDS. Stage 1 is when the CD4 count drops below 500. Stage 2 is between 200 to 500, and below 200 is when someone is diagnosed as having AIDS. For people who are not taking medication, it can take over a decade to move from stage 2 to stage 3, but with advances in medication, it's now possible to never reach stage 3 and actually become virally suppressed. Viral suppression means that the individual who is HIV positive has so few copies of the virus in their body that the virus is untransmittable to their sexual partners. There are zero physical signs for HIV until you reach later stages, so it's important to get tested regularly. Testing is quick, easy, and can even be free. You can even do it at home as I've shown you in a previous video. Discuss your HIV status with your partners before having sex, and don't assume anyone is HIV negative. And remember, a lot of people don't think they're HIV positive, even though they might be. So there are some similarities between HPV and HIV. Both are sexually transmitted, and they sort of sound the same, especially if you say them really fast. Also, neither of them is a death sentence, and can usually be treated fairly easily. So there it is, the difference between HPV and HIV. And you didn't even have to pay off an adult film star or ask a billionaire to find out. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex. Thomas talks about at gmail.com.